Jujutsu Kaisen is on a roll. This is going to be one of the best shows of 2020, without a doubt in my mind. It's got style, it's got class, it's got uniqueness, it has familiarity to it, but it just screams new and fresh and exciting, and I love that about this show. I mean, I was actually kind of interested to see what the big story hook would be for Jujutsu Kaisen, because, I mean, yeah, obviously our main character, Yadori, because he did swallow that cursed finger and seemingly is possessed and probably would join up with the Jujutsu, but where would they actually go with that? Was that all they had up their sleeve? And no, there was actually quite a bit more. And I love the idea that the person that we meet at the beginning of episode one, we get to see in episode two in a completely different light, and you just kind of forget what happens, or you just kind of overlook, and you're like, this guy's awesome, he's kicking ass, he's taking names. And then, of course, we get this nice little bonding moment of being like, you know, we probably should kill him, but we're not going to kill him. And he's like, yep, I agree. And then we get back to the chair scene, and he's like, yeah, but I'm actually going to kill you. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this show's amazing. I like the idea of having your main character, who is pretty much from our perspective, despite only having seen him for two episodes, seemingly is quite a good guy. He's someone who wants to help people, wants to save people, good personality, he's not arrogant. He doesn't scream like that shonen protagonist that you want to punch in the face. He legit just seems like a good guy who wants to help people and doesn't have malicious intent but then is now cursed by someone who does have malicious intent. And it's such an interesting way to have someone who's a ticking time bomb that should he not be able to force back this mind, he will cause hell on Earth and could just honestly cause the apocalypse depending on how crazy it gets. It's such a fun concept and the idea that, hey, we're not just going to let you live because you're the main character. We're going to let you live temporarily. We're going to let you live until we find all 20 fingers. If we find all 20 fingers and you consume them all, you will be complete and then we can kill you and that will be a way to destroy the curse because destroying these fingers is impossible. So we could kill you and that will destroy the finger inside you, but if you really are compatible, then this is basically the best of both worlds. And you can kind of look at it in multiple ways. Maybe he'll find them in a year's time, maybe he'll find them in 30 years time, maybe he'll find them by the time he's an old man, right? So there's definitely potential for him to live a fulfilling life despite having a crazy voice in the side of his head. But at the same time, it's something that definitely is not an easy to answer question. What do you do to say, I mean, it's hard to say, like you say, okay, well, obviously the answer is to say, yes, I will help you because you'll get to live at least longer than right now. But at the same time, there's probably that voice saying, can you run away? Can you escape? Can you just live your life the way it is? And it's such a fun concept. And because our main character, Adori, is such a good person at the end of the day, I like that his reason for joining up, it's such an interesting way to twist what you thought was going to be cliche on his head. His grandfather said, you know, make sure you help people. That's typically like the driving force to a lot of these characters. You know, someone important to them told them to be a good person, so they're trying to be so. And the whole idea of the entrance exam in this show is one of the more original, I have to say. Not only do you get introduced to the principal, who's badass, he's looking buff as shit, but he's making dolls. And you're like, okay, this is kind of funny. And then those dolls start kicking your ass. And he asks you, why do you want to be a part of my school? And he's saying, well, someone wished for me to do it. He's like, that's bullshit. The idea of throwing it back in his face and saying, like, at this point, the way you're going, you're going to curse your grandfather. What is your actual drive? And he says, I want to do this because only I can. And that's enough of a reason to let him into a school. It's nice having those moments where you think it's going to be really typical in what you assume a show like this would be. A main character with magical abilities that only he has. And you think, okay, you know, he's going to fight for the greater good because his dying grandfather asked him. But really, he's the type of person he is, the way he's been raised. He doesn't want to just sit by, read manga, hang out with his friends as he realizes people are dying when he could have done something about it. It's not just simply because his grandfather wished it, it's because that's who he is at his core. And like this principal said, I would have preferred you just saying because I wanted to prolong my life and that bullshit excuse he gave me right away. It's so nice to see that and just... It really does say to me that the characters and story progression is going to be top notch, especially now that I know it's going to be a two core, which is incredible because the style to the show just visually, you look at it, it just screams something new, fresh and exciting. The character personalities, while there is that kind of like mob psycho charm where the characters have fun, they goof around and it's not constantly serious and you're sweating bullets. But when it does get serious, it definitely rattles your bones, if I'm being honest. I mean, when they explain who's inside our main character, who he's possessed by, this dude sounds insane. I mean, the idea of forearms and just the king of curses, like, what do you really do with that? And the way that they're able to blend this, like, okay, he's starting to possess him and he'll just slap his face or he slap his hand, right? And he just is like, yeah, this guy's always talking. He always has his voice in my head. It's super annoying. 
But imagine, because I assume the way they're going to go is the more fingers that he consumes, the more of a presence this guy is going to have. While he is the most compatible and it seems like he has pretty good handles over things, what if he's sleeping and he loses control? I mean, that was one of the tests to see if they would keep him alive, knocked him out, and if he comes to, I mean, that says he has full control. He clearly has control when he's awake, but what if he's asleep? And I love those little ideas, those little just rules that, like, it makes sense when you think about it. You may not be thinking about it at the moment, but when they bring it up, you're like, well, yeah, when you're asleep, you're not really as active and are you strong enough to be able to control a curse in terms of doing things like that. And while our main character definitely has adapted to this insane lifestyle easier than most, I think the reason it works so elegantly in comparison to a lot of shows where their main character is just like, oh, now I'm in this supernatural situation, I'm going to play hero. They're usually very arrogant and you don't like their persona, but there's something about him where he doesn't infuriate you. He's just very pleasant to listen to. He's honestly quite funny. He's someone who wants to be a hero not for the reward, but literally just wants to help people. And he feels very selfless. And I love that about his persona. And I think that's why it's going to be such a fun show to watch, because rather than him just being that cringy, cliche protagonist, he actually has some unique traits to him, and the way he is just perceived by others is either he's lying to himself, in the case of the principal, who makes him actually admit to his true feelings, or he's someone who's just a really good guy at the end of the day and isn't afraid to take the blame. I love that about him, like, especially during the hospital scene, he's like, you know, it's not your fault. You see a crying girl who's, like, looking at her friend almost on death's doorstep. He's like, you're no one to blame. You may have, you know, done the little ritual that unleashed it, but I'm the one who picked it up. And I love that because no one's really to blame in that situation because none of them knew what was going to happen. But he's someone who's not here to take the blame because he wants a pity party. He just is a good guy at the end of the day. And I love that about his persona. And the episode kicks off with some insane action. I mean, I'm not surprised, but I'm also surprised by how Studio Mappa is constantly evolving their animation style, especially for action heavy series. It feels like at this point in time, they're like one of the safest bets for reinventing the wheel for action animation. And I mean, even if you didn't like God of High School, you can't deny the fight scenes were incredible. And it seems like Jujutsu Kaisen is like even stepping the bar up even more, which is saying a hell of a lot, I have to say. They're definitely different, but I mean, they're just really delivering high quality fight scenes that just you can't look away. And the way they blend these colors, like I love the darker atmosphere when they're on the rooftop, but it doesn't feel like a hopeless situation, but more of a weird spiritual anomaly. And then just everything about it, I mean, the background art, the character designs, I'm loving the character designs. I mean, honestly, there's some of the more original I think I've seen over the past couple of anime seasons where it doesn't feel like that copy and paste action shown in style. It just feels unique. Like, this could honestly be a mystery detective series by the way the characters look if they're one tossing around magical energy. It doesn't feel like they're just trying to play by the rule set. The story and character's progression is clearly saying that, but the music production by blending so many different styles to create a very unique atmosphere, the character designs, the animation, everything about it just feels fresh and exciting, and I think that's why it's going to be a very popular show this season for people who always like these types of anime, but even those who try thinking it's going to be nothing, but actually saying, wow, this actually is what I hope more series would be like in the future. And honestly, I think this series is going to blow up like crazy. I mean, it's already starting to blow up, but I mean, just especially by the time we get to that second core, I think this is going to be a lot of people's favorite over the past couple of years, or at least that's how I'm feeling right now. I'm loving it. I think it's very unique. I think it's fresh. It's exciting. And I'm so excited for more. Fridays are not disappointing with anime output, and uh, I don't think they're going to be disappointing anytime soon. Let me know your thoughts and feelings though down below. Especially interested for anime originals, what do you think of the story hook of our main character basically on death's doorstep, but wanting to find all the fingers before he gets executed? Where do you think they might take that story down the line? If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like to show your support and hit that subscribe button if you have been new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.